Hello, my name and I'd like to continue our lecture series on the histology of the cardiovascular system. So in this lecture, we will discuss the um, histology of capillaries. So capillaries provide a site of exchange of metabolites and they exist at tissue level. So we have three types of capillaries and this is mainly based on the histological structure of the endothelium. So we have continuous capillaries, fenestrated capillaries, and discontinuous capillaries, which are also called sinus capillaries. So, um, continuous capillaries have continuous endothelia. Fenestrated capillaries have fenestrated, okay? Fenestrated endothelia. Then this just shows you continuous capillaries, continuous endothelia. This is continuous. This is fenestrated. This one is also continuous under an electron microscope. That's what you see. So we start discussing the continuous capillaries. So when you look at this vessel, okay, the endothelium has no fenestrations. So whatever is in blue, these are the endothelial cells, simple squamous, and they're lying on a basal lamina. Pink is basal lamina. So the endothelial lining is continuous. Okay, so the continuous capillaries have a continuous endothelial lining with no fenestrations. And the basal lamina, if you look at it, is also continuous. There are no openings or perforations. Then you need to know the sites where continuous capillaries are found in the nerves, muscles, lungs, connective tissue, and exocrine glands. Continuous capillaries are found in the lungs, muscles, um, nerves, connective tissue, and exocrine glands. We go to fenestrated capillaries. Now, look at this image. You have your endo. What do we see? It's a fenestration. You look at the basal lamina. The pink is continuous. Okay? So the basal lamina in fenestrated capillary is still complete, like continuous capillary, but the difference is in the endothelium. It is fenestrated. So fenestrated capillaries have fenestri in the endothelial cells and this fenestri they may have diaphragms covering them or lack diaphragm covering them so they may have a cover which you call a diaphragm or they may not have yeah but um when you look at the basement membrane it's continuous so where do we find these fenestrated capillaries we find them in the intestines in the glomeruli of the kidney and in endocrine glands remember Exocrine glands had continuous capillaries, endocrine have fenestrated capillaries. We also see them in the intestine and in the kidney, the glomerulus of the kidney. Then the last one is the discontinuous capillaries. These are also called sinus capillaries. So if you're to look at this endothelium, okay, first these discontinuous capillaries have a very large lumen and the endothelial stri have no diaphragm. If you're to look at fenestrated capillaries, some fenestri are open. Others are closed with diaphragm, so they may or may not have diaphragm. But when you look at discontinuous capillaries, the, the, all the fenestra of the endothelium are lack diaphragms. Okay, so discontinuous capillaries have very large fenestra without diaphragms covering them. And look at the bas basal lamina. What do you notice? The pink is not continuous. So the basal lamina could be absent or discontinuous. Unlike fenestrated, the basal lamina is very complete and continuous capillary basal lamina is also complete. So discontinuous has fenestra with no diaphragm and incomplete basal lamina, which is discontinuous. So where do we find discontinuous capillaries? In the liver, in the hematopoietic organs, such as bone marrow and the spleen, and some endocrine glands, liver, hematopoietic organs, and some endocrine glands contain discontinuous capillaries. And then we discuss the veins. The veins return blood to the heart, the oxygenated blood back to the heart. And we have three types of veins. We have large, medium, small, and um, we also have venules. So it's venules that converge to form small veins, then to medium veins, to large veins like superior and inferior vena cover that take the blood back to the heart. So the large veins, we have the superior vena cava, okay? So like the structure of any blood vessel, there's a tunica, intima, media, and adventitia. So, but in veins, these are very thin. So superior vena cava have thin tunica, intima, and media, and the bulk of the vessel wall is just adventitia. So tunica, intima, media, 
but adventitia is thick. The tunica intima has simple squamous endothelial lining with a thin subendothelial layer containing connective um, tissue and below it you can appreciate an internal elastic lamina there then when you get to the tunica media it's also thin with smooth muscle cells collagen fibers and elastic fibers then the tunica adventitia is larger contains collagen elastic fibers fibroblasts and neurovascular structures it also has some longitudinally oriented smooth muscle cells so those are the features of the superior vena cover then that's a large vein now we go to medium um, sized veins so medium sized veins have tunica intima media and adventitia yes but their tunica intima is very narrow and the internal elastic lamina is very difficult to identify. So very narrow intima with a difficult to identify internal elastic lamina. Then the tunica media has smooth muscle cells but are less regular. Remember in arteries the smooth muscle cells are concentric. Here we have smooth muscle cells but are not regular. You cannot really tell that they're accurately concentric. Then the tunica adventitia is the outer portion, has no smooth muscle cells unlike the large veins okay then the bands of tissue in the lumen look at the lumen you have bands of tissue okay lumen of the vein form pockets of tunica these are pockets of the it's like intima invaginates into the lumen to form valves and you know the function of valves is to ensure unidirectional flow so to prevent backflow then we go to the venules venules have a tunica intima with um simple squamous endothelium but there is no subendothelial layer or intarsio so, uh, endothelium simple squamous and immediately after endothelium you get straight to smooth muscle so the venules have no subendothelial layer and no internal elastic lamina so from endothelium you get to smooth muscles and it's very thin only two to three layers of smooth muscle cells and some collagen fibers to support the smooth muscle cells after that you get to the tunica adventitia which mainly contains collagen fibers elastic fibers and fibroblasts okay so there is no internal elastic lamina there is no sub endothelial layer in the venules then we now discuss the heart so um you first need to understand the gross anatomy of the heart and there's a lecture on that so you can go in and check the gross anatomy of the heart so the heart is a double muscular pump it has a right side with a right atria and ventricle that receive blood from the body through the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava afterward it pumps this blood to the lungs for oxygenation from the lungs blood oxygenated blood enters the left atria through pulmonary veins to the left ventricle and out to the rest of the body through the aorta so the ventricles the four ventricles of the heart they have three layers you have inner endocardium followed by myocardium and epicardium endocardium has simple squamous endothelial lining after the endothelial lining there's a sub endothelial layer made up of connective tissue collagen elastic fibers fibroblasts so endothelium underneath sub endothelium those are the parts of the endocardium then the myocardium is mainly composed of cardiac muscle and you know features of cardiac muscle they are branching with a single nuclear centrally located and there's a presence of striations and intercalated discs so you have cardiac muscles in the middle layer and this is the thickest layer it constitutes the bulk of the heart to enable the heart to pump so that's why the muscles are the bulk of it after the myocardium you have the epicardium and it contains considerable fat so this epicardium is actually the visceral layer of the serous um, pericardium and it's an outermost lining of the mesothelium so there is the outermost lining of this epicardium is simple squamous mesothelium but the epicardium co contains adipose that lines the heart um, so this is the structure of the heart so it, this one just shows you the endothelium and uh, sorry the endocardium and myocardium and the endocardium is lined by endothelium which is simple squamous epithelium beneath it what do you see the subendothelial layer and this subendothelial layer contains connective tissue collagen elastic fibers okay then before you get to the cardiac muscle so 
again, simple squamous endothelium, subendothelial layer, connective tissue, and fibroblasts before you get to the, the uh, myocardium. Then we have the conducting system of the heart. So again, in the gross lecture, this was described from, um, remember you come from SA node to internodal fibers to the AV node, from AV node to bundle of his that divides into right and left bundle branches before they send impulses to the Purkinje fibers that will innervate the walls of the ventricles. So the Purkinje fibers are just modified cardiac muscle fibers. Okay, they're modified cardiac muscle fibers and they form part of the conducting system of the heart. Okay, so they are like the arrow is showing you the modified um, muscle fibers. The myocardium is um, striated, as we have said, and branched with uh, one or two nuclei located at the center of the cell and there's a presence of intercalated disease. so you, you can see one or two nuclei in the cells are branching okay and then the presence of intercalated discs and striations those are the light microscopic features of myocardium you can appreciate striations here there are some vertical lines and you can appreciate these darker vertical lines these are the intercalated discs you can see the cells are the center one cell and the cells are branching, okay, cells are branching, you can see, and striations and intercalated fibers, and these are intercalated discs, okay, and electron microscopy, remember intercalated discs are just made up of mainly gap junctions and desmosomes, yeah? Then the epicardium, which is the outermost portion, we said it contains connective tissue, collagen elastic fiber fat that is around the heart adipose you can see this is adipose around the heart neurovascular structures are present okay nerve vessels these are vessels but the outer lining is the mesothelium of the visceral pericardium so this visceral pericardium is simple squamous epithelium or mesothelium so this is the epicardium again this is the myocardium this is the epicardium you can appreciate adipose neurovascular structures okay and adipose tissue so these um, vessels that you see these are the coronary vessels that supply the heart before you get to the mesothelia what are the special features of the heart we have valves so valves tricuspid bicuspid they are just um, out, uh, outgrowth from the endocardium the heart is lined by endocardium so when it grows inwards towards the lumen of the heart that forms the valves to prevent backflow then we have the cardiac skeleton that supports the valves the valves are supported okay by cardiac skeleton and these are mainly made up of dense regular collagenous tissue that replaces myocardium so you have the cusps of the valves that are dense regular connective tissue so it's just um, the valves themselves are endocardium that has invaginated below endocardium there's myocardium but these valves are not made up of myocardium it's just dense regular connective tissue that form the cusps of the valve so that's what you call the cardiac skeleton that supports the valves so um, these are Purkinje fibers modified uh, cardiac muscles okay and um, you can appreciate that. So what are the functions of endothelial cells? Endothelial cells line um, the cardiovascular system and the heart. So they act as a permeability barrier. They are permeable to some substances. Then they synthesize collagen and proteoglycans for basement membrane maintenance. They help to maintain the basement membrane because they synthesize collagen and proteoglycans. Then they promote uh, uh, thrombus formation like when you injure yourself you cut yourself blood is able to clot to prevent continuous bleeding for long why because the endothelium of the cut blood vessels are able to produce uh, factors like will will brand factors to make protective thrombus to form they also minimize pathological thrombus formation instead of you forming clot in your vessels it's the endothelium that protect you from forming pathological thrombus yeah so like producing postacycline, nitrous oxide, thrombomodulin, these are factors that inhibit platelet addition and aggregation. So that's why you are not forming clothes, the pathological uh, uh, thrombus. Then we have vasoactive factors that control blood flow. So like nitrous oxide, prostacycline, 
okay? Then mediating acute inflammatory reaction like interleukins and they produce growth factors. So these are the functions of endothelial um, cells. So vasoactive um, substances such as nitrous oxide causes vasodilation. So that way you're able to control blood flow. That gives you an example. Um, endothelial cells produce interleukins. Interleukins uh, are chemotactic. So they help to bring immune cells to the site of injury. Okay. And that way, acute inflammatory reaction can occur because you need acute inflammatory reaction um, in, in cases of injury because you have the neutrophils that are the first cells, uh, immune cells that are responsible for acute inflammatory reaction. But how will neutrophils know there's an injury for them to come? So where there's injury, the blood vessels around the injured area, okay, the endothelium of these vessels will produce interleukins that will attract the cells that are responsible for acute inflammatory reaction. Then we have growth factors such as fibroblast growth factor, platelet-derived growth factors. So all these are produced by the endothelium. So you're able to even repair and maintain the wall of the blood vessels. So these are the functions of endothelial cells and you need to know all of them. And um, when you're asked, you need to be able to explain or illustrate. Don't just say permeability barrier, growth factors, uh, uh, regulate, mediate acute inflammatory. No, you should be able to explain. Yeah, like promote protective thrombus formation whereby uh, when you're injured, you don't bleed for long because the uh, injured vessels are able to produce factors such as von Willebrand factor, which help you to form a clot immediately and prevent continuous bleeding. Okay. Pathological thrombus like uh, uh, you produce substances like prostacycline and thrombomodulin and this minimize the formation of pathological thrombus within vessels so you have to explain you can't just list um, the points without explaining how endothelial cells help to mediate acute inflammatory reaction how do they mediate uh, they minimize pathological thrombus how do they control blood flow they produce substances that may cause constriction or vasodilation that way you mediate blood flow okay so these are the questions you need to be able to answer after this lecture describe the three layers of the blood vessels in detail describe the differences between elastic and muscular arteries and name examples for each describe the layers of the heart in details state the um, differences between the three types of capillaries and list the location where each is found List six functions, or rather, it should be describe the six functions of the endothelial cells. You should be able to describe, not just to list them. Thank you very much.